Coach. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Jennifer Strofe, and I'm a real live trial attorney. I try real cases in real courts, and real people actually use my advice. Um, I also happen to teach improv for lawyers. Now, what we're going to talk about today is rethinking the name game. Now, most seminars that anyone's been to that deals with improv starts with a traditional name game. Um, one of the ones, of course, is like Jubilant Jen, and you have to go around the room. It's, uh, it's just awful. And then we play one at my particular theater called Sorry, 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 where you walk up to someone and go, Sorry, 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 and you put out their hand. They tell you their name, and you tell them yours. So I began teaching lawyers improv, or attempting to, with the traditional name games. Let me tell you, Jen was not jubilant because no one wanted to do that. It was ridiculous. And then sorry, sorry, sorry led to five to ten minutes of questions. First of all, why did I have to apologize for getting a name? Because frankly, isn't that acceptable within our culture? And I'm like, I know, just say sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, then why do I have to say sorry, sorry, sorry? Is one sorry not sufficient to convey that I have a regret for forgetting your name? Why the repetition? Why three? And I'm like, because it's the game. <sighs> so what is the classic name game supposed to do? Well, we look at it, and it's supposed to teach names, but it does it primarily just through repetition. It does forced, awkward participation. These people were not doing it. And while I am going to talk about lawyers today, and all of these have been tested on lawyers, they are suitable for other human consumption. Um, but what name games are lacking is the missed opportunity to actually have a genuine exchange of information. When a lot of you go out and you'll teach these homogenous type groups, like, again, lawyers at bar conventions, doctors at medical conventions, they walk up to each other and it's like, hi, I'm Jen, I'm a lawyer. Hi, I'm Susan, I'm a lawyer. We really don't get genuine information or anything that creates a conversation, because it's all the same. But what if there was a way to make the name game different? What if there was a way to actually create something within that game? If we rethink what we want to accomplish with a name game, we could actually have something which taught personal information. We could have something that created a genuine bond. Because knowing that your name is Susan doesn't tell me much. I probably forget it five minutes later. I definitely don't remember it at the next conference. And I'm not going to be networking with you. And to be in any profession nowadays, you need the support of your peers. You need people to bounce ideas off of. And we could create something through a genuine experience. Enter, have you met my friend Ted? Have you met my friend Ted is a name game that I've created. I created it for lawyers, and gosh darn it if they don't actually like it. So let's talk about have you met my friend Ted. Starts in a group. Usually a circle, you could be sitting much as you are right now. And I tell everyone to partner up. You will partner with one person. That person will then share their name and one true piece of information. So if I was introducing Ted, Ted would tell me my name is Ted and I like to travel. I am then going to walk around the room with Ted. It could be arm in arm. It could just be standing next to each other. But as I walk around the room, I'm going to introduce Ted. He is never going to introduce himself. And when I introduce Ted, every time I run into a new pair, I'm going to heighten. So have you met my friend Ted? He likes to travel. Have you met my friend Ted? He owns an airline. Have you met my friend Ted? He owns Virgin Atlantic. Have you met my friend Ted? He's going to the moon next week. And then we come back to the circle. And when we come back to the circle, I say the biggest, most outrageous thing of the night. Have you met my friend Ted? He owns a timeshare on Mars. And then at this point, Ted will finally introduce himself to the group. Hi, I'm Ted. I like to travel. It always gets a laugh. Not only does it always get a laugh, it creates a genuine moment. Because people will remember the ridiculous heightening. People will remember where we were going with all this. And people remember when they see that person at the next conference. Oh, you're the guy who likes to travel. So we've actually created something. Again, this just goes through in the story, How I Met Your Mother, or it was a TV show. They always were introducing their friend Ted, trying to get him a date. And they would start with whatever it was. In this case, an architect. And they just got more and more ridiculous. 
until Ted introduced himself. So what are the skills we would actually learn by doing an end game like this? First of all, we learn heightening. Heightening is a classic improv exercise where you just go bigger, 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 bigger. Next, you're actually learning teamwork because Ted is relying on you to introduce him. Ted is relying on you to go further. But most importantly, and my favorite part of this, is we have controlled failure. And what I mean by that is many professionals, lawyers included, we don't like to fail. By bringing a game at the very beginning, the very first time out the gate, that includes failure, and in fact is dependent on it. If I forgot Ted likes to travel, I am going to bullshit my way through the rest of that afternoon until we get back to that circle. And that's where the funny is, and that's what makes it good, and that's what makes it work. So again, by having this controlled failure, I have taught my lawyers and other human beings that it's okay in this safe space to fail. So what I wanna challenge everyone to do though is to use something like, have you met my friend Ted? You can do this again in a circle um, where you start actually passing around the ridiculous heightening. You can do it in partner groups if you have enough. Um, in conferences where I've been dealing with 20 to 50 people, it works fantastic because you can go around to a lot of different people. And one of the things I think people should not be afraid of is the time that it takes to play this game. It is not as fast as some of the other name games, but it does so much more. Because once you've taught your individuals that it's okay to fail, and once you've created that genuine bond for them, they're more willing to play. And really, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to accomplish as improvisers. We're trying to create that genuine moment, that genuine connection. Superfluous connections, surface level connections are not what we need. We need something where people will be able to discuss something later. And there is no greater joy as a facilitator of an improvised session than to see your people go back later that conference and walk up to each other. And while they usually do not remember the names, you're the guy who likes to travel. So next time you go to play the name game, I encourage you to adopt my game, Have You Met My Friend Ted? And I encourage you to rethink what you're doing with it because we can make the name game more. We can make it a genuine opportunity for connections and collaboration. Thank you.